Welcome back to Metroid Fusion, everyone. We have six minutes, a bit less, to stop the station from exploding. Back into Sector 3, we'll have some items to collect as well. But basically, it's a full-on dash to make sure we can save the station. We still have to go through a few annoying little bits of, let's call it, housekeeping. Clearing out the area so we can use the speed booster because, needless to say, we have to go to the bottom of this shaft. The Funes are fairly easy to destroy as before. Down here and move very quickly. Try not to land on the enemies. Into this superheated room you won't be able to see very easily but those magma geysers will spit up from the lava and impact your movement. It can be very hard to pick their tells. Look for those little splashes against the flashing background. Now we've encountered Namihaze. Upgraded forms of Funes. Come on. They were also found in Super Metroid. You could freeze them, but I'm not sure if you could defeat them. Thankfully, they are still very good as platforms because the Ice Beam could shut them down quite easily. Still have a few of these servers to defeat. They have improved their abilities slightly from Super Metroid since they can drop fire on you. Clear the way, don't fall onto that. Quickly freeze that. And on we go, we've nearly made it. I think we're doing pretty well for time. Well, here's our main boiler. Head up here, watch out for the broken bits because you'll fall through those. And of course there's a Ghadora to defeat, which means a boss fight is ahead. Now it is entirely possible that the Ghadora should be smart enough to just keep spamming beams, but you will make it pretty quickly. As a scientist, shoot the scientist and it will form into a core X. And we have recovered the Wide Beam. Gives us a much greater range. It essentially functions like the Spacer. But, there we go, the cooling unit has activated. Crisis averted. Thankf thankfully, we were able to keep a cool head and we could withstand the heat. Much more power behind it. We have s somewhat higher chances of survival now. And since we didn't really get to listen to it last time, let's enjoy the music of Sector 3.
Once again, a bit more ambient, but nonetheless a very a very appropriate piece. Not necessarily one I'd enjoy per se, but it does sort of give the feeling of a fire-based dungeon from the Zelda series, to my mind anyway. Ah, oh, that was my own fault. We can grab a few pickups, as I said. We can get the last of the missile expansions and energy tanks in this area. If we go through this way, we will be able to open up a new pathway. We can bomb the blocks here and move on through. If we freeze that sova there, we can climb up here. And we can get back out that way. This platform is solid, the rest of them aren't. Use your ice missiles to create platforms and don't fall into the lava just like I did. Because it's painful. It's very painful. You will have to crouch to line up a couple of shots, so wait. And then get up here. For the energy tank. And there's a missile expansion just here too. Now we may be able to proceed later on, but we don't have the abilities we need. So let's make our way back. Running into some enemies while we do so. Let's head up and back up this shaft and note that Namahe's replaced Fune's for the rest of the game. They will also spit projectiles at you, much like they did in Super Metroid. And they're annoyingly accurate, especially since I'm actually standing still and giving them a very good chance to shoot me. Now we can't go back out that way. So if we manoeuvre up here, we'll be able to make our way back to the main area. You pretty much know the procedure by now. We are starting to get a fair bit stronger, but even so I'm not quite optimistic about our chances just yet. We are still very much outgunned depending on which enemies we face. And we're going to find some in due time that really give us trouble. If we drop down here, we will be able to leave the sector. We've honestly done a pretty good job even though there's still more to go. You never quite feel safe in this game. Even getting off this station wouldn't make us safe. Nothing up there as far as I know. We might be able to get, get anything that is up there with some new items. But not our concern for now. Let's top our energy up and go see what Adam has to say. The X mimicked a crew member. It all makes sense now. The X can absorb the memories and knowledge of their prey. What an astounding find! HQ was very impressed. But don't you find it strange? 
This could have destroyed the station with the X in it, not to mention the SAX. Unusual for a self-preserving species like the X. Unless... Your presence is an even greater threat. A threat to the existence of X elsewhere. This is only a hypothesis. Perhaps their survival instinct is in conflict with their newly borrowed intelligence. Don't let your guard down yet. The X are still a threat. Samus, I see biosigns on the habitation deck. Survivors? The infected crewman you saw had survived until recently. Maybe there's a chance. The signs emanate from here. Is your objective clear? I have just restored power to the main elevator. Use it to return and look for any survivors. Of course we do have to go back this way because I forgot to grab one of the energy tanks and missile expansions. Which is actually just below us in the very first superheated room we can encounter. Thankfully we don't have to do anything ridiculous like that horrible run in Metroid Other M. It almost becomes a retroactive take that to the game. One good shot shot will take care of side hoppers. Be very careful when maneuvering through here to avoid those jets of lava. I'll keep my beam on hand. Got through with no worries. Pick this up, but of course, more to do. Let's bomb this. And shoot our way through there. Might take me a little while, but we do have to shine spark through there. Up we go! And we have to do a few fairly complex maneuvers to make our way through this little maze. Also, it's not quite apparent. Thankfully I found it first time, but you do have to use a bomb to get up there. And that gives us, I believe, 11 energy tanks. We still have nine more to find. Just over half. That extra health is very, very valuable given how much damage you can take throughout this game. I know I mention it a lot, but it really adds to the sense that you are constantly vulnerable. It almost makes the game into a survival horror title sometimes. You're alone and thoroughly outgunned on a station infected with parasites, which can imitate pretty much anything. It does borrow heavily from The Thing, as I mentioned, especially the, G the John Carpenter version in 1982, whereas the Metroids themselves actually borrow from Alien. It is, of course, entirely possible and most likely, that Ridley was named after Ridley Scott, who directed Alien. If you want a bit of inspiration, look at the forms of Metroids as they appeared in Metroid 2. Well, let's get ourselves up to the main deck, been quite some time. Away we go! Now as for this, let's move back through here. And let's get speed boosting. Because that is how we get that missile tank. Always good to have a few extra pickups, so I'll start sweeping the area, see what I can find. 
don't think there's anything in here. I have to wonder if I can dash through those with the speed booster, but there's not enough space to charge up. So probably no reason to worry about that. I'll do a bit of research for the next episode. We'll look around and see what we can grab. We can also head into the Sub-Zero containment area if we want. What? Well that's not good. You know him? You've fought him so many times. You'd better hope that's an ice sculpture, because otherwise the Federation has somehow preserved Ridley. What is going on? Things are... things are much, much dodgier than we first assumed. So we don't need to worry about the navigation room. I think there's an area a bit further back. Ah, here. Now those... Okay, so let's see what I can do. Not enough space there. Maybe if I run from back here. No, I'm probably going to have to come back to this later on. Or at least do my research on it. But I'm sure we'll find something. If we head up this way... We'll be able to access... Of course. That's really disappointing. I was hoping to find what was in there. But I think we can access some more pickups. So we've got a save room there. And some Funes have appeared. Now there's a bit of careful navigation we have to do in here to get that missile tank, so apologies if you see me just sort of faffing around a bit. Uh, do we have to go in from a higher area? I think we do, so we'll have to... Scale the shaft. And watch out for that because those would, would probably crumble underneath our feet. Alright, so that did nothing for us. We'll have to go higher up. And that's how we get up there. So if we bomb this, we can open that, shoot our way through here, bomb this,
break through there. And that gets us that missile tank. So let's make our way back up. Sorry about the little diversion, we'll wrap it up by finding out what those creatures we saw running around in that habitation deck were. Come on. I'm not going to kill you, I'm just giving you the cold shoulder. Interesting indeed. Do you recognize them? The Etikuns and Dakora that we saved during the events of Super Metroid. So the canonic the canonical ending is that Samus did save them. Now I have to work out how to get up there. Admittedly, this took me an, em an embarrassingly long time last time I did this. Oh, well, I'm stupid. Well, looks like we'll be able to make our way through here. Stop there. Fall just short. Oh, they can shoot at you. Come on, stick your neck out for me. There we go, we've rescued our little buddies from Super Metroid. And they're quite happy to see us too. And there goes the, the little one. Well, I suppose we'd better go and tell Adam what happened and then we can wrap it up. Etikuns and Decoras. I've met these intelligent beings before. They seem to recognize me as well. How unusual to meet again here. In the past, they'd helped me unleash abilities I didn't know I had. But where did they run to? I hope they're safe. So yeah, you get a great view of the lime green and hot pink suit. It's not fantastic. It's not a great design, the various suit in this game. I don't mind the regular fusion suit, and I know it's a slightly controversial design. Still can't do anything about that. But let's drop down and go and talk to Adam. Let him know about our new friends. So the survivors were not human. Most unfortunate. We can now confirm the deaths of all crew members. I imagined this was the case, but I had hoped it wasn't so. I believe the X only infected the humans for knowledge. That form is too weak for battle. I am sure the others were merely food for the X. Samus, I think they are evolving. Growing stronger. Some are now appearing that resist your current weapons. HQ anticipated this and sent Powerbomb data as soon as the hardware team finished it. Is your objective clear? Download it immediately. Our choice of data rooms is limited to this one in Sector 5, ARC. Go. Now. Well, we have our objective. Once again, we will have to head out to Sector 5 and get our hands on the power bombs. It's a cold area, but it's not the right one. We will wrap things up for here just for now. Next time, we will be heading in 
to Sector 5. I'll go and save there. Assuming I don't go the wrong way again. Wow. What a sense of direction I have. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Apologies for things being a little bit awkward. And I will see you next time for more Metroid Fusion. Stay safe out in space, everyone.